Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Today we've got one of those videos that started as one thing and ended up going in kind of a different direction. Now, I have a lot of failures on this channel. I have a lot of problems with my technology, with my prototypes, with my theory, especially when it comes to satellites, radio communication, things like that. Sometimes I have a video that just doesn't work out at all. And this was leaning towards being one. I was trying out S-band satellite communication and I was having absolutely no luck with the equipment I had. Now, even though it was kind of a failure, we're not going to leave it at that because I have a interesting new gadget that I will show towards the end of this video. If you want to see that, just go ahead and skip to the last few minutes. But if you want to see the whole thing, then keep watching. Today I'm expanding my amateur satellite experiments into a whole new frequency range, the S-band. In the past I've been looking at VHF, UHF satellites, and the L-band, which I can do with a basic RTL-SDR software-defined radio. To do the S-band we need a little more hardware. So I just got some of these gadgets in the mail. As usual, Donnie wants to help with these. Uh, the most interesting for S-band is going to be this Newelec Hammett Down converter, which is already covered in cat hair. This um, extends the range of my existing software-defined radio. This has a 1.5 gigahertz local oscillator, so it essentially is subtracting incoming signals by 1.5 gigahertz, meaning that my RTL-SDR, which goes up to about 1.7 gigahertz, can now go up to uh, something over 3 gigahertz, or at least that's the theory. Um, so we're going to be using this in a little bit. Fluff is now trying to investigate. Whenever I do one of these videos, the cats just have to help with it. We've got a bunch of these PCB antennas. This, I think, is what's called a Vivaldi antenna. This Christmas tree looking one, I think, is called a log periodic antenna. It's similar to a Yagi, but uh, slightly different. And again, that's supposed to be a wideband microwave. Uh, Fluff is now sitting on all my stuff. Come here. This one, I'm not quite sure what it's called. I would refer to that as a little miniature loop antenna, but um, yeah, we're going to see how well any of these work and if we can use them for stuff. I've used this gadget or one like it in a few videos. This is a vector network analyzer or nano VNA. And this is the version 2 and it goes up to about 3 gigahertz. So we're going to put this into SWR mode, which is basically all I ever do with it. It does all kinds of other stuff and as I say in every video, I don't know what all those other functions are. One of these days I'll get around to learning them. So the SWR and that Christmas tree antenna looks pretty decent at basically every frequency above 1.3 gigahertz here. That Vivaldi antenna also looks very good at similar range of frequencies. And this loop antenna looks pretty good at 2 gigahertz and up, but not very good below 2 gigahertz. So uh, this one might be better at the higher frequencies in the S band, while those others I might be able to use for L band and some of the lower frequency microwave stuff that I've messed with in the past. This log periodic Christmas tree seemed to have the best SWR in the 2200 megahertz, 2.2 gigahertz range, which is mostly what I'm going to be looking at for these satellites. So we're going to start with this one. As usual, our antenna element is positioned in the dish in an extremely professional manner with all kinds of duct tape. All right, we've got our down converter connected. And we're using offset tuning to account for the local oscillator in that down converter. And we're tuned into what I think is an upcoming S-band satellite frequency. So let's see if we get anything. Okay, I think I might be getting a little bit of signal from Metop B, but it's very faint. Okay, we've tried a couple satellites and have not gotten much. Uh, this next pass is supposed to be much better. It's supposed to be basically straight overhead. As usual, the cats want to be very involved with whatever I'm doing. All right, that one did not decode properly. I think that was just a telemetry channel from uh, Fengyun 3F. So not a weather image on that one anyway. This next one we're gonna try, actually two more coming up. We've got NOAA 20 and NOAA 21, which should be sending down weather images on S-band. So I'm a little hopeful for this, but again, if this doesn't work, we're gonna have to try something else. So we did get a couple data frames from that last pass, which tells me we're on the right track here. We're getting the satellites in the right place. Our dish is receiving them, but it's not quite doing it very well. This is definitely not a how-to video. This is me learning how to do this. This is the first time I've tried this particular band this kind of satellite. Well, so far with this small dish and the linear feed, I have not been able to get much out of these satellites in the S-band. 
at least not more than just a couple frames of data, a couple lines of image from NOAA 20. I believe most of these S-band signals are coming down in a circular polarization, so they're coming in as kind of a spiral rather than a, a straight beam. So to get the most out of this, I really do want a circular feed, a circular antenna, right here at the focal point of my dish. I also want a bigger reflector, so we're going to go over to that 7-foot C-band dish instead of this 30-inch little dish. Previously, I've been able to use an LNA, a filter amplifier unit that sits up here by the antenna, filters out signals that are outside of the range I want. I mentioned earlier this is a very wideband antenna element, so it's picking up not just S-band, not just those uh, 2 gigahertz signals, it's picking up everything from about 1.5 gigahertz on up. So it's going to get interference from cell phones, from radars, from aircraft, from other satellites. It's going to get a lot of noise. If I had a filter specifically for S-band, like I do for L-band, for the GOES satellites, then it would cut down on some of that. However, I don't have one of those. I have not found uh, one of those online. It seems like a lot of people make their own. I am not that good at electronics, so I don't know how to make one from scratch. Anyway, this dish is going back in the corner of shame. I'm going to use this for something else in the future, but I think we're done with it for this video. Now, when it comes to the helical feed, fortunately, I don't have to build one completely from scratch. Derek SGC is another satellite experimenter. He's got a wonderful YouTube channel, he's got a website with a bunch of resources, and he has some files on Thingiverse for 3D printers of various antenna designs and antenna elements that I can just print out and use to build a helical feed. Thank you to Derek SGC. Uh, everyone should go out and check out his channel. He knows a lot more than I do about this satellite stuff, so hopefully I won't lose all my subscribers to him, but he's another great one to watch for this kind of thing. All right, I was trying to print a Derek SGC design of a helical feed, but it looks like we've gotten spaghetti instead. I've tried this print three or four times now, and we've got spaghetti again. Don't know if that's enough to be usable. Okay, so we ended up with two partial 3D prints, but I think we might be able to just stick these together and hot glue them, and I think the holes are going to line up. So, hey, save it for parts. I've got a few of these metal plates that I pulled off of some other antennas. They're a little floppy, but I think they'll work. All right, so we've got our big fold-up C-band dish. We've got our helical feed, with apologies to Derek SGC for mangling that. And we've got our down converter and RTL-SDR. Now, this frequency is likely to get a little bit of interference. For example, if I turn on my cell phone and go look something up online, we get a ton of interference starting in this uh, approximate band. So we're probably gonna have to keep the cell phone off during this pass. Well, I'm starting to see some kind of signal coming in faintly. I'm also getting occasionally very weird abstract signals, like I don't know what the heck this thing is. Okay, well we tried recording the Coriolis satellite, even though the signal was very weak. Part of the decoder claims it's synced, but the deframer is not synced, so I don't think we got anything from this pass. Yeah, sat dump tried its best, but there's nothing in this folder. Well, so far this S-band stuff has been even more challenging and frustrating than when I was trying to get the L-band. It seems really difficult to get a good lock on any of these S-band satellites. Even with the big dish, with the helical antenna, I'm getting a signal now and then, but I'm not getting anything strong enough to decode. Now, I still don't have an LNA. Uh, we might set this one aside and come back to it. Speaking of L-band, I tried 3D printing another of Derek SGC's little antenna scaffolds, and that turned into spaghetti just like the S-band scaffolds. So, yeah, really not pleased with the technology of 3D printing anymore. Okay, so that's kind of where we left this video. I had not been having any luck with receiving S-band. I had had no luck printing uh, Helix stuff, and we weren't really getting anywhere. Now, since then, I've done a few other things. I have changed that one dish over to completely L-band reception. We've got that mounted to the satellite tracking unit. I have had some limited success printing and making some S-band Helix antennas, and this is the gadget I wanted to show off. I have one of these, the Hack RF-1. Now, I would like to thank Newelec for hooking me up with this, because these are expensive, and I didn't want to go out and pay for one, so Newelec was very kind. They uh, noticed that I show off a lot of Newelec products and show off a lot of their LNAs, their amplifiers, their filters, all kinds of gadgets and products. 
and they were willing to send me one of these to play with. Now they also sent me another LNA, the LANA, L-A-N-N-A. This is a wideband version that should get lots of different signals and I think these two things together are going to be really cool to play with. Now I won't be able to cover every feature of this thing in this video, but let's take a quick look at it. We have an antenna that it comes with, a bunch of antenna adapters. This is always nice to have antenna adapters. I can always use more of these. USB cable, we have the antenna input, and then we have these uh, clock in and outputs. So you can actually chain multiple uh, Hacker F1 gadgets together and for example you can use two of these to get really wideband signals for things like NOAA GRB goes rebroadcast. Alright the thing was too new and fancy for my Linux box it kept crashing SDR++ on there but it works just fine on Windows and we've got all kinds of new settings here we've got LNA gain, VGA gain, we can enable amps um, yeah we've got some different settings and options I don't know what some of this does so we're gonna have to look that up and it seems to be working uh, pretty well just with broadcast FM right away. Yeah, it works just fine with regular NOAA weather radio. And this is a really impressive bandwidth. I can see 20 megahertz of spectrum here where the old RTL SDRs would only give me like 2.5 or so, maybe 3 if you really overclocked it. And again, we can go way, way up. We are up at 3 gigahertz, 4 gigahertz, 6 gigahertz. So I'm not picking anything up at 6 gigahertz little stick antenna. I need a satellite dish for that, but it's amazing to me that we can go that high with an SDR. So I'm really looking forward to trying out all the features of this Hack RF and looking at some more satellites with it, especially S-band stuff. So we're just looking at 2.4 gigahertz here, and again, we can see Wi-Fi stuff going on. So I'm pretty sure that's what all these little intermittent spikes are. That's what all these little blips on the screen are. That's my phone getting Wi-Fi. That's my security cameras. That's all my Wi-Fi devices in the house trying to communicate. So if I was doing any Wi-Fi systems uh, investigation or security auditing, this would be really cool to play around with. Now, I really like Nualex products. I have had really good luck with them. They are fantastic. I keep on buying them and I will throw links down in the description to some of the things that I've bought from them and describe how I use them, what they're good for, and why I recommend those. I'm using up some old video, I'm going through some old backlog stuff, but we're in the middle of so many projects right now that I'm not going to have time to play with these probably for a few weeks. So stay tuned for those, they'll be up and coming here at some point when I have time to actually sit down and give these the time and attention they deserve, and I'm really looking forward to that. Until then, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.